First things first. Let's give it a shot. This is actually my third, second, third cup of the day so far, but pretty good. New video. Let's do it. All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome to a new YouTube video. Today we're gonna to be talking about my photography favorites. Um, I've seen tons of these videos across the web, across YouTube, and I love watching them. Essentially what I kind of think they are is just you know various photographers talking about items or things that they enjoy kind of in the photography realms, so to speak. And that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today, just some things that I've been enjoying, whether it be pieces of gear, um, different mediums of consuming photography, whatever that may be, we're gonna be just kind of exploring a few different things that I've really been enjoying over the last couple months. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna be talking about today is the trusty beloved Pentax 6.7. Um, I've talked about this camera before in various videos, but I think I just wanted to talk about it again because I've been using it a lot recently, mostly for portraits. Uh, this 105 mm f2.4 lens, especially on medium format, is insane. Um, the, also the minimum focusing distance on this lens is pretty nice as well, so you can get very close to your subject. You get a really nice depth of field, but I really just am so impressed with this camera. The only thing that is kind of annoying is how heavy it is. Um, I don't really want to travel with it very much. Pretty much I only stick to shooting with it when I'm in LA, um, shooting portraits or whatever. Uh, but this camera is incredible, especially for portraits. I wouldn't really consider it a very landscape camera. I would use like a different camera for that. Um, but this camera is incredible and this 105 mm lens is very widely known as like one of the best lenses out there for medium format. And I've really been enjoying shooting with it. So I thought I'd give it a shout. Go check out Pentax 6.7. You can pick one of them up actually pretty cheap on eBay. Um, I picked this one up for about $1,100, which if you're looking to get into medium format is a pretty good price. Um, you can also look at like the Mamiya RZ67 or others like that. I just, I, I splurged on this one and I've really been enjoying it, so. It also has this wood grip on the side, which I know some people think it's just kind of like for Tumblr or whatever. I really actually think that it's useful. The only thing that I've noticed though is I have to like focus first and then I can hold it and then I can shoot. It just helps like with stability, honestly, while you're shooting. Obviously, you, you don't really want to focus with your right hand unless you're a lefty. Um, but for me, I hold it like this, I focus, and then I hold the grip, and then I take my picture. So, it works pretty good, but yeah, really stoked on this camera. Moving on, next we're going to be talking about the infamous 85mm 1.4 IS lens from Canon. Uh, as you guys have noticed, uh, some of the shots that we've been shooting, specifically B-roll shots in the last couple of videos, have been really tight and also like insanely sharp and actually really stable as well. And that's all thanks to this lens. Uh, we've been using it a ton for all the like the close-up B-roll shots and it's really been impressive, honestly. I was recommended this by a friend of mine. I kind of wanted to test it out first, so I, I just kind of bought it on a limb thinking I might return it and I'm not returning it. This is, a, this is an amazing lens. Uh, it's so tack sharp and I really, you know, I think versus like a 7200, which is so heavy and so like large, this lens is very compact, it's tiny, fits right in your bag, you know, it's not gonna take up a ton of space. It is a little heavy, but for the, you know, for the weight, I think it's, it's very warranted because you get such clean shots, you know, specifically if you're looking up, looking for like close-up shots, if you guys watch my Tokyo video, a lot of those shots were on this lens, just handheld, and that's what's cool is that image stabilization in this lens is incredible. Um, most, most image stabilized lenses from Canon are very, very good, but I've been extremely impressed with this lens and I just wanted to let you guys know that it's an incredible lens. If you're looking to pick up a telephoto lens but you don't necessarily want the 70 to 200, this is a great lens to look at. So I got a lot of different books while I'm Next we're gonna be talking about <coughs> momentary break for some coffee. So next we're gonna be talking about books and specifically like photography related books. Um, aside from photography, I also really enjoy nice design, architectural design, interior design, whatever you may have you. And I was very fascinated with all the buildings in Japan. And we went to this really cool library that was like super modern, it was beautiful. And I, like we were there for probably hour and a half, two hours, all the four of us were just loving looking at all the different books in there because they're all like very design oriented in this specific library. I thought it was so cool so I picked up a couple different books and I've really been enjoying consuming photography books as a different medium versus like Instagram or Tumblr or Twitter, Pinterest, whatever it might have you. Like a physical form of photography is actually really cool. You know, it's just a great way to consume and get inspired that isn't on a screen. You know, like I love being able to flip through these pages and just like see all these all this beautiful work right here and it just, it looks, it's so cool. It's, it's a great way to, to get inspired. I love being able to hold like a physical, tangible, thing in my hands and actually be able to look at these photos. It's, it's pretty awesome. So I got one book about like all, it seems to be, a lot of it's in Japanese, but the photos, it looks like it's mostly about the uh, architecture in Tokyo because there's so many people that live there, but it's such a neat and tidy city. Um, and this is kind of what the cover looks like. It's a super cool book and I've, I've really been enjoying it. I was reading it on the plane actually on the way back home. 
Um, this one's probably my favorite, but I did also get a couple extra ones. This next one's called House of Architecture, which is pretty cool. Um, also, a lot, a lot of just really amazing architectural photos. It looks like they're on film, which I also love. Um, it's very, very carefree, very like not obtrusive photography style. So it's very, you know, like in the moment, it's not, you know, taking over the scene necessarily, which I, I really enjoy. And I'm just very inspired by all these images. You know, I don't necessarily have to shoot these kinds of images, but I really, I love looking at all these different kinds of books, especially architecture, because I think good architecture to me is very inspiring and it's something outside of photography that is inspiring to me. So I would encourage all of you guys, if you're looking to find more inspiration, to find other mediums or just interesting, you know, subjects that you like to, you know, look at or read about or even just go explore. And that might get you inspired as well. You might, you know, you have no idea. So I would definitely suggest you guys go try to find some other mediums as well of stuff that you're interested in. And finally, I have this really cool, it's called Brand Documentary Magazine. Um, I don't know if this is, I don't think this is native necessarily to Japan. Um, it looks, it's all in English and everything, but it's a very cool magazine about Leicas and like the history of Leicas. Um, tons of different, you know, just articles about different kinds of people that, you know, use Leicas or like even the, backstory of how people how like us are made in the factory which is pretty cool and man there's just tons of cool photos in here lots of different like you know bios about different people and everything and I thought it was pretty cool I was I was reading it in the bookstore and I thought I'd, I'd pick it up for people who have been to my house my friends and everything they always love my book collection because I, I really do try to collect books as I go and travel places I just think books are a great way to you know bring where you were home with you and be able to show those people when they're over at your house so Really been enjoying these books from Japan. Uh, I just got back a couple days ago, but these have been awesome. It's a great way to remember the trip and also get re-inspired. So next we're gonna be talking about prints. And for me, you know, going off the tangent of books, you know, consuming different kinds of mediums, it's really been amazing to print my own work and I would encourage all of you guys to do so. It's not expensive, you know, I think these prints even, uh, they're like four or five dollars for like a, a 16 by 20. I just use a local print lab here in LA called Richard's Photo Lab. They're great if you guys wanna use them. Go check them out, I'll leave a link in the bio. Uh, but Richards is amazing and I just printed a bunch of like my medium format photos and I just kind of wanted to see like what they looked like and it, it, Honestly, I brings these photos back to life You know, I got like a lot of these different kinds of prints Also, if you guys notice when we're filming in the studio, I have a huge print of the Italian Dolomites that normally is behind me We're filming in the apartment right now, but I really love like just being able to hang these prints like you know around my house and everything I have prints pretty much in every room now and it's a great way just to you know also be able to show people kind of like you know, my work, you know, not, not on a screen necessarily because I think in print form, you look at it and you actually like take it in, you know, you, you know, you look at all the different colors, the textures, the composition and all that stuff. And it's just such a cool way to appreciate, you know, the photos that you've taken or your friends are taking, you know, I, I love having these prints just kind of lying around. People always kind of go through them. And if, you know, I, I like to give prints away to my friends, you know, if, if someone says that they really like a certain print, I'm like, oh, just, I'll send it to you. You know, it's, it's such a great way to be able to connect with your friends and give something more tangible to your friends. And I've really been enjoying printing my work. So if you guys don't or haven't printed your work in the past, I would highly encourage you to do so. I think it's, it's a great way to appreciate your own work or others. Also, I've really been enjoying Portrait 800 on both 35 millimeter and medium format film. Uh, as I spoke about in previous videos, I think it's very versatile film. Um, I do enjoy rating it at 400 and getting those like, you know, the shadow detail in my photos. But at the same time, if I need to shoot, you know, a bit more like kind of like dusk setting or really low light, I can bump it all the way up to 800, if not even higher than that. And the cool thing about Portra, or Kodak Portra in general is that it's very forgiving. Uh, even Portra 160, Portra 400, all the way up to 800. It's very forgiving and you can, you know, overexpose or underexpose it and it's probably gonna be fine, which is why it's such widely used film. Specifically though, I've really been enjoying using this like in low light situations. As you guys remember back in the Santa Barbara vlog, we shot some photos of the Land Cruiser with Portra 800 as the sun was going down. It just looks so good. Like the colors in this film, it's amazing. I love how it like reads the low light and, and I've just really been enjoying shooting with it. You know, I think it, it is a bit expensive. It's one of the more expensive films that I think I've shot with besides like Ektachrome or stuff like that. Portrait 800 is pretty expensive. Like for this box, it's $55 for five rolls in medium format. Don't shoot film unless you're ready to go broke. But beyond the point, Portrait 800 has been a blast to shoot with. I've been shooting with it more than anything as of recent. And I definitely suggest you guys go pick up or even just a roll and test it out and see what you think. And let me know in the comments. We'd love to see some shots you guys are taking with this film or any film in general. Last but not least, we are talking about the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. I know this is not as exciting as the stuff we were just talking about, but this thing has been honestly the, one of the best pieces of technology that I've honestly ever bought. So if they were like AirPods, a microphone, coffee, you know, like honestly, this thing is, it is literally 
goes everywhere with me. It's smaller than a credit card, which I think is the most amazing part. It's USB-C, which is even better. You know, it's so fast. You can I literally can transfer a full, whole entire 128 gig card onto this SSD in a matter of like five minutes, which is so fast. It just fits in your pocket. It's nice. I, it's really great for traveling. I used to carry those large lacy hard drives, and this is just such a great way to be able to offload all your footage onto a very small compact device. So I've really been enjoying the SanDisk. They are a bit pricey, but I believe that they're worth it. I usually just transfer all my footage onto it and I can work off of it. And then once I'm done with the project, I transfer it to a much slower hard drive that's you know bigger in capacity, but this is great for working off of it. handles 4K footage perfectly, as well as raw files. So I would definitely recommend checking these out. Okay, so that concludes today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I really, it's kind of fun just to talk about stuff that I'm interested in, you know, like whether that be lenses or film cameras or even prints or photo books that I've you know received or bought in over the last couple months. I think it's really interesting. I'm gonna to try to do this more often every time I go on a trip maybe or every couple of months once I have some new stuff to talk about. Just some stuff that like is really interesting to me right now. I'm gonna to try to put as many links as I can in the, in the description. I don't really think that these books are gonna be available but I'll, I'll search around and see if I can find them. But if you guys wanna order a print, definitely go check out Richard's Photo Lab or even if you live in another city besides LA, check out your local print shop. I'm sure they're just as good. Um, definitely let me know if you guys are shooting a lot of film. I would love to see some shots, even with Portrait 800, like I said, I've really been enjoying that. But yeah, thank you so much again to all of you for watching. I really enjoyed putting this video together for you guys, and we'll see you in the next one.